Hello there and welcome back to Bolts for Bucks. My name is Stephen Bresnan and today we're going to be going over basically synthetic stock versus um, wood stock. And so I get asked the question a lot, you know, which stock is better or what are the pros and cons of each? And so we're going to try and delve into that today. Now, um, it is a little bit of a complex question because there is a lot of variables, but I'll try to to explain it as best I can, basically. So we're basically going to talk about like synthetic as in polymer stock um, versus wood stock, like I said, versus uh, fiberglass or carbon fiber stock. Now, first off, I have here a Winchester Model 70, and this happens to be just made of beautiful wood, this stock here. Um, it, and this one features glass bedding that uh, mates up to the receiver. Now, first I want you to, to think of this. The more rigid your shooting system is, the more rigid the stock is, or chassis for that matter, the more consistently reliable your rifle should shoot. But that kind of goes into theory because there's a lot of, like the barrel matters, um, all, all, all different things matter, the ammunition matters and things like that. But given all those aside, putting all those aside, if your stock is extremely rigid and doesn't fluctuate with uh, barometric pressure, humidity, um, or anything like that, or dampness um, like wood might, it should inherently uh, make your rifle a little bit more consistently accurate. So basically a stock is designed so that you can hold a gun, function and uh, use the weapon, and it holds the receiver. And the receiver, we're going to tell you right here is the receiver, this piece right here. The receiver holds the barrel. The barrel's screwed in to the receiver. So first and foremost, a good stock is a stock that has a free-floated barrel. And of course, you can check uh, to see if the barrel's free floated by literally just taking a piece of paper. Of course, this one's going to bend up on me. <laughs> taking a piece of paper and running it down the stock. And it, as you see, it runs down the channel and it doesn't uh, get stuck. So that means that this barrel is fully free floated. Um, so that's also another aspect of a stock that's important. But first, let's go over the pros and cons of wood stocks. So, uh, a pro would obviously be, be, be that, man, it's, it's beautiful, it's classic, it has nice lines, it feels good in the hand. Um, it, it almost tells a story, in a sense, um, with use. And it's just classic, it's gorgeous, it's pretty, it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, more than a carbon fiber or a fiberglass or, or a polymer stock, at least in my opinion. Um, it, it can be very light, which is also a good thing. Um, it can be easy to modify um, if you want to cut down the butt on it to make it shorter, the length of pull shorter, you can do that. The, the cons to it are that um, the elements, the environment can cause wood to expand or contract or warp. And also that it can crack if it gets too dry or if something hits it really hard. It, it, it's, it's strong, but it's not extremely strong, so it can crack and whatnot. So those things can cause, obviously, problems in the field. Um, if the environment can, can warp the stock, then it can cause problems with accuracy or consistent accuracy. Um, now let's go on to, of course, a fiberglass or a carbon fiber stock. This happens to be an HS Precision um, stock, and it's made of Kevlar. Uh, excuse me, fiberglass that's reinforced with resin and Kevlar. So these stocks are very solid. I mean, the chances of this failing in the field from, from falling, from being dropped, from it having something impacted are very slim. It's extremely rigid, extremely rigid, extremely strong. And so it's more durable than wood. It's uh, more consistent than wood, meaning uh, the environment, the humidity, the temperature, it won't change the structure or warp this stock at all. And so that can, can make your rifle more consistently accurate, essentially, or more reliable. Then we come down to your cheaper polymer stock, and this one happens to be a Ruger American. By the way, all these rifles were emptied um, and checked before this video started. And of course, on a cheap polymer stock, you tend to have a, a tinny feel or a hollow sound, I should say, when you touch it. 
because usually they're hollow. Now some, some of them they fill with stuff to dampen the sound. These stocks, if you, if you notice this barrel is free floated, but if I flex the forehand at all, if I have a bipod on here and I push down on it when I'm taking my shot laying prone, it's going to flex and make contact with the barrel on the barrel channel. So the downside to most polymer stocks is that they're going to flex, they're going to bend, they're not going to be as rigid. And so um, they can negative, that can negatively affect uh, consistent accuracy. Um, some polymer stocks have pillar bedding, some have no bedding, some have aluminum bedding blocks and so on. This has basically a, two pieces of aluminum that act as V-block bedding against the receiver. It's not to say that you can have a wood stocked rifle, a fiberglass stocked rifle, a polymer stocked rifle, and it be just as accurate. These are kind of generalizations. The fit and feel of wood, the, the aesthetic look of wood is by far the prettiest. Um, if you get a carbon fiber or fiberglass stock, they can still be aesthetically pleasing um, and they probably have by far the most stability um, and strength out of, of the three we discussed. Then you come to a, a polymer stock, usually they're the least aesthetically pleasing and the weakest of the stocks. The trigger guards, if they're molded into the plastic, can break. The, they can break where they go into the butt pad, um, where, where the palm swell is, and, and so on. So I suggest and I recommend that if you're, you want a hardcore hunting rifle that you can hunt with for years out in the Rocky Mountains or in the mountains 10,000 feet in the snow and just banging around and you can, you can put it through the paces and you want to have that thing be consistent and reliable and durable, get a carbon fiber stock or a fiberglass resin stock. Now, you can also get laminate wood stocks, which is basically a, a very dense version of plywood. Um, and those are quite strong. There's, they will warp a lot less than a wood stock would, a traditional one piece uh, hardwood stock would. Um, so they're not a bad option and they still do look very pretty. So if you're looking for something that's very um, well made, um, is going to hold up to the elements, and do a good job, but you want it to be pretty, that's not a bad avenue to go, but they can still get um, scratched and dented easier um, than, uh, than the other stocks I mentioned. And they also are usually quite heavy because of how they're designed. And then you can go into a chassis. Now, I, I'm not gonna get into chassis a whole lot, but basically it's a machined piece of aluminum that the, the receiver and the, the rifle itself sits into. Now, these are very rigid. Obviously the elements are not gonna really have effect on them, except for if it's extremely hot and that the sun is hitting that chassis and you go to grab it when you're hunting, it can get very hot to the touch and uncomfortable. Also, they can be loud when brush is raking up against them. And uh, generally they can get caught onto things because of their modular design. Um, so generally I use chassis only for uh, target shooting, long range shooting, not necessarily hunting. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview. Now, it's also important to realize that the bedding itself matters a lot in a stock. A polymer stock with aluminum bedding block um, is going to, to uh, inherently, hopefully, shoot more accurately than one without because you have a metal on metal bedding. Think of it a foundation of a house. The more solid that foundation is, the better that house is. And it's no different with rifles. So. If you have a glass bedded rifle or aluminum bedding block in your rifle stock, or you have um, basically a pillar bedding, which is, is pillars of metal that butt up against the receiver, that's going to help also. Hope you enjoyed this brief, uh, basically video on synthetic versus non-synthetic uh, rifle stocks. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to hearing back from you.